Jim Stewart again, checking in from St. Paul, Minnesota, only six miles away from the memorial to George Floyd over in Minneapolis, thinking now about uh, George Floyd and the cinema. Strange to think about putting the two together, but watch, it's going to be easy. The title of this particular dose of um, tonic for fragile white folks is entitled Thrilling Sagas. And the first thrilling saga that we're going to turn to is a film that I'm sure you have heard a great deal about, know a lot about, but I think need to be reintroduced to just because it's such an important landmark in the application of the law of racist gravity to the United States. And that, of course, is the famous first full-length feature movie ever produced, done by D.W. Griffith, the early part of the 20th century. It's called Birth of a Nation. And Birth of a Nation refers to a double meaning. Birth of a Nation, in one sense, is a long epic film, runs over three hours, has D.W. Griffith replaying the entire Civil War for his viewers so that they can see that the old United States has faded into the past and that now we come out of the war with a new nation birthed in white supremacy. The birth of a nation is the birth of a white nation out of, you reunited after the tragedy of the Civil War. It's all a romance having to do with two branches of a family, one Southern, one Northern, one slaveholder, the other branch of the family, very much tied up in the anti-slavery movement. And the point of the film is to bring those two families together in a reconciliation that is accomplished and completed by the suppression and murder of black people. The second reference in Birth of a Nation is the birth of the Ku Klux Klan, the patriotic organization of white vigilantes who intervene in the chaos and destruction that followed the end of the Civil War. This is a different historical memory entirely from the one that Thomas Nast wants to give you early on. Why not this man? But a perfect representation of Thomas Nast's last cartoon showing African-American politicians completely out of control and needing to be subdued. The cartoon that Thomas Nast did not add to the ones that we showed you early is the one that shows the Ku Klux Klan intervening to completely obliterate African-American power in the South, create segregation, create terror, and enforce the, the patterns of lynching that we saw. Birth of a Nation is a new genre, it's a new art form, and it's very difficult for us to understand how audiences saw it back then. They'd never seen anything like this before. The film is set up in such a way that it uses dramatic techniques of cinematography that no one had ever, ever seen before. I can't explain to you all the complexities of them, but the claim of the film is not, we're showing you a film that uh, says some things about what might have happened. Uh, this is a um, re imaginative recreation that is just a film. D.W. Griffith claims in this film that he is actually putting on celluloid history as it happened. In the film, there are cut out portions which document through texts that this really happened. The characters in the film are real people. Abraham Lincoln is in the film. Jefferson Davis is in the film. Leading members of the Republican Party in very villainous costumes are in the film because they believe in African-American equality. The African-American characters are all the worst and most awful stereotypes that Griffith can decide to manufacture as real people who really needed the kind of suppression that would finally happen when the Klan rides at the end and the movie closes. Woodrow Wilson was president of the United States at the time that the film came out. He had been president, by the way, of Princeton University. He'd written a best-selling history of the United States. He came from the South. He had a private showing of the film at the White House and this leading American historian, intellectual, who also segregated every federal office he could get his hands on and was a screaming white supremacist, saw the film, talked to the press, and said, this is history written with lightning. He didn't say this is a good film. 
He didn't say, you know, this really brings up some interesting questions about what might have happened back then. He believed it because it has a claim that it's absolutely true. What D.W. Griffith did in this film was to convince white people that he was showing you actually what went on and that you were participating as a firsthand observant participant in the actual drama of fighting the Civil War, ending the Civil War, resisting the whole ample definition of nothing but freedom with a definition of nothing but freedom that's so narrow that finally at certain scenes in the film, African-American families are huddled in their living room as Klansmen are shooting at them through the windows. We're going to simply spend some time looking at some clips from the film. And I'm not gonna say anything much at the end, except to remind you that what Woodrow Wilson thought, all white Americans thought, this film went every place in the United States over and over and over again. This is a silent film, of course. Subtitles tell you everything about what the dialogue is. Usually it's accompanied by a pianist, an organist. It's a completely different medium from the films that we see today, but it was so new back then. The Chicago Defender reviewed the film. Guess who did the review? Ida B. Wells. Guess who stood outside the big theaters on State Street and Michigan Avenue in Chicago as the film debuted? Ida B. Wells and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. There are white people involved in the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. It's possible to stand up. When you look in the past, you say to yourself, if you want to make moral judgments, if I lived back then, I would be like those folks. You don't know that. I don't know that either. The past is the past. It's easy to think of yourself being on the right side of history when the history's already happened. It's much more challenging and much, worth, much more worthwhile to think about being on the right side of what this history has left us with.